Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm going to make a new quilt called Layer Chops. Now, I've written a pattern before that uses a similar technique to the one I'm going to use today. This one was called Chopsticks, and you can see it's got these slices and little sticks in every block. But when I was thinking about making this into a bigger, full-size quilt, I actually realized that the proportions would be better if these blocks were bigger. I also wanted to try using lots of different colors and patterns, not just the two tones that I've got in this quilt here. And so I made the pattern to use layer cakes because that's a really easy way to get a nice coordinated group of prints. So we're gonna need 35 layer cake squares and one yard of an accent. So I'm gonna open this up and we'll take a look at the squares that are in here because this one has 42 squares and I'm only gonna use 35. So they're all pretty and I like them all, but I think that these few back here, there won't be much of a contrast between my accent and these guys. So we'll just put these aside for another project and then all of the rest of these will look good with that solid black. First step is to cut our accent into little strips. The little strips are going to be one inch wide. And I find that it's really best if we cut these strips parallel to the selvages because there's much less stretch in the fabric that way. So I've got four layers of fabric here. If you aren't comfortable cutting four, you can just cut two. But I'm going to first, I'm gonna cut this into a 15 inch long piece. So I'm gonna have four layers here. And I find it easiest to cut this way. So I'm just gonna spin this around and then I'm gonna cut one inch strips. So I'm gonna cut off the selvage here and you'll notice I'm using a hand weight here to help hold down my plastic ruler. That really stabilizes it and keeps it from sliding. And now I'm just going to cut this all into one inch strips. So these are going to be left long like this and I've got 80 strips now. The next step is to take one of our layer cakes and we're just going to chop it not in the middle not exactly anywhere just at an odd angle we're just going to chop it right across there and we're going to take these two halves and one strip over to the sewing machine so here is our square that's how it that's how it looked whole now i'm going to use a marking pencil i'm going to use a white pencil because my square is so dark here and somewhere near the middle doesn't have to be exactly in the middle I am going to put a little teeny mark on both halves just enough so you can see it now I'm going to take my strip and I'm going to make sure that I have a little bit of a tail coming off of each side and I'm going to fold this in half right where that mark is and I'm folding it in half and then I'm kind of finger pressing it so that I've got a line all the way across the middle. Now I'm going to open it up and I'm gonna mark this too because I really can't see that. Um, even though there's a little wrinkle there, I can't see it very well. So I'm gonna reinforce that line by drawing on it with my pencil. Now this is on the back side, so it's not gonna show at all. Now we're gonna set this half aside and we're going to match this line with that little chalk mark there. And we're going to stitch the stick onto the layer cake. So you can start way at the beginning here if you want. You don't need to pin anything. It doesn't tend to stretch at all because this is cut on the lengthwise grain, which is very stable and doesn't stretch. And just go down the side with a careful quarter inch seam there. Now I find it easiest to press the fabric 
away from the strip. So if I turn it around, I can pull this and I can use my finger or my fingernail right along that seam. And it just presses very nicely like that. So the seam is pressed away from the strip. Now I'm gonna turn this back around so it looks like a square again. And I'm gonna to wanna to take that little chalk mark. I'm gonna put these right sides together. Now you can see that chalk mark there. And if we look here, you can see that chalk mark. I'm just gonna line them up right there. And now I'm gonna stitch down this side. Now again, I'm gonna to wanna to press this seam allowance away from that accent fabric. So I can just pull it open here and use my finger there. Now look, we have the exact same square that we started with. It's exactly the same shape. It's exactly the same size. And that's because we added a one inch strip here, but then our seam allowances there's a quarter on each fabric here and a quarter on each fabric here. Our seam allowances take out a total of an inch. So we end up with a nice 10 inch block, which is what we started with. Now you don't have to cut the blocks one at a time. You can stack up a couple and they don't even have to be stacked up exactly on top of themselves. You can move them around a little bit like this and then make a slice so they're all going to be slightly different then. So we'll take all of these, I've got three, and three strips over to the machine. Now we're still only going to sew with one of them at a time. So let's get this brown one here and move it off. And we're just going to do the same procedure. Now if your blocks are not dark, you might be using a dark pencil instead of a white pencil. So just Make your little mark there. Always make sure that you've got a little tail on both ends. Fold it in half. It's particularly hard to see my fold because my fabric is black. Draw that line and stitch this on. Now let me show you why we need to have those marks, why I'm using the little white line. In order to get this piece on, I'm not exactly sure if I didn't have a line where to put it here. So I can put it right sides together, but it's very unclear where along here it should go. But since I marked the middle and then I drew that line there, everything will match up. It does, even if it's not exactly in the middle, I certainly could have put my chalks way up here. It doesn't matter as long as they are all lined up. And this just makes it very, very easy to get your block square again. Even though we finger pressed these nice and flat when we were stitching them, you still want to bring them to your ironing board and give them a nice steam press. Now, because we turned these when we cut them and cut them at different angles, you can see that the sticks are all at slightly different angles there. And that's good. That's what we want. We want just a little bit of difference in all of the blocks. Now, all of the blocks that I've done so far have been cut at an angle leaning like this but I don't want all my blocks to be like that. I want some to be cut at that angle. So for these blocks, we're gonna cut them this way. So again, you can stack them up. Honestly, it's just almost as fast to cut them individually. So you can do it either way. You just want to, when you cut them, do them in different spots. So here I've got about an inch on the top 
Now let's do about an inch on the top, but at a much more acute angle there. And then maybe we want to do one that's almost straight up and down, but near the edge. And so this way we're going to get blocks that vary just a little bit more. Each of my blocks now has one accent strip in it and I want to add a second accent strip. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to make the second accent cross the first one. So I'm going to again use a random angle here. Cut it. Take the accent strip and head over to the machine. We're going to use a similar method to what we did with the first accent. I'm still going to mark it somewhere. And I'm still going to mark this one, fold it and mark it in the same spot. And let's go ahead and stitch this on with those marks lined up. Now for these seam allowances, I want them to go toward the accent. And that's because we've got all these seam allowances coming in here and it's just a lot easier to get this folded this way. Now we're going to match this up again. Put that white mark next to the white line there and stitch it up. And hopefully when we're all done, we will have a nice X in the middle. And now I can also show you a little better why we get the same square that we started with. So if I put these seam allowances all towards that accent, when you flip this over, Look, you can see your cut there, and they just meet all the way along there. This makes a nice line, and then when we look at the front, we've got everything lined up, and we've still got a 10-inch square. Now let's get this pressed nice and flat. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this cross effect with half of my blocks. Now with the other half of my blocks, I'm going to make a second cut, but I'm not going to cross it. So I can cut it here, I can cut it here, it really doesn't matter where you cut it. But I'm going to make the second cut so it does not cross. And then I'm going to put the accent in here using exactly the same method that I used here. I'll mark it with a little white. I'll put this here and I'll fold it and mark it. And I'll finish that up with the second half of the blocks. Once you have all the accents stitched in and they're all ironed nice and flat, all we have to do now is trim up the blocks. Now we started with a 10 inch block. And if we put this on our cutting board, on the lines here, you can see it's still 10 inches but we've got those little black accents hanging off. So all I'm gonna do is line this up, trim off that guy, trim off this guy. So this one, I'm gonna have to trim off all four sides. Now, if you find that your blocks are looking kind of crooked, you can trim them all down smaller if you like, but you'll have to trim them all down. I find that with a 10 inch block, even if it's not perfect, I will still be able to sew this to the next block, even if the next block is maybe an eighth of an inch off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and trim up all the blocks. 
Now we're ready to lay out the quilt. I'm not going to worry about which block, whether it's crossed or not, goes where. I'm just going to lay this out by color and I'm just going to alternate the colors. And then once I get the colors all laid out into a nice looking balanced color quilt, then I will trade things around and look at which way the accents are going. Now that all the blocks are laid out, I'm not even going to turn them. I thought I might want to turn them to decide which way these lines are going to go. This is just how it was laid out. I balanced the colors a little, so I've got the zebra prints there and the light ones there, but I think it looks pretty good just like this. So I'm going to sew them into rows, sew the rows together, and get it onto the quilting machine. I've got the top all done. It's all loaded onto the machine. And now we need to pick a thread color. So any of these tones, they're all in the quilt. I think they would all look good, but I think I would like to use a darker color this time. We've got the black accent, so I'm gonna go with black. For the quilting pattern, I really wanted to use some sort of animal design. And I have one called Zebra Rectangle. And I think that's gonna look really good on the prints that I have in this quilt. got the layer chops quilt all done. This is a really easy quilt to make and it's very forgiving. So if you want to try a new quilt that's easy or you're a new quilter, this is a good pattern to go with. I love those accents going across all of the squares. Now it turned out about 48 by 67. And of course, since it's made with layer cake squares, it's real easy to get a bigger quilt. Just get two packages of the layer cakes. The quilting doesn't show much on the back side there because I used this multicolored batik, but you can see it quite nicely in here. And the zebra quilting matches really nicely with all of these animal style prints. Thanks for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section right below and I'll be sure to answer them. Before we go, we're having another giveaway. We're going to give away two wall hangings to two different winners. So you have double the chances of winning. This is called Moda Love. We did a video to show you how to make it with charm squares. Or you can make a big version of this with layer cake squares. You can even make a little mini version with those little two and a half inch squares. But today you can win one of these and it's very easy to enter. Just put your email address and your name in the link below that says giveaway. And remember, we can send the winning quilts to anybody in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.